Hello and welcome to My Secret Math Tutor. For this video we're going to be talking about the negative angle identities. These are really interesting identities in that they give us information of what to do when we have a negative angle. And here's the first two that you really want to keep in your back pocket. If you have sine of negative an angle, it equals the negative of the sine of the positive angle. So you can really see that negative sign is just coming out front. If I have cosine of a negative angle, then it's simply equal to just cosine of the positive angle. So in this case, the negative sign goes away entirely. Now, to understand why these work, it's all about looking at the symmetry of the function itself. So we're going to explore a little bit about these two and then see why the other uh, negative angle identities work the way they do. So a neat thing about sine just by itself is that it is symmetric about the origin. That means if you were to spin it 180 degrees, it would match up with itself. So essentially what this identity is saying is, you know, let's say you were out some way, um, let's say some angle out here, and you found a point on the graph. And you compared it with that same point in the negative direction on what point was on that graph. And what it reveals is the y values are going to be the same, except for one might be a negative of the other one. See how they're on different sides, like that's in the positive, that's in the negative? And sure enough, that's what our identity is saying. If you're looking at the negative angles on this side, and you're looking at the positive angles, same ones, but just positive, then you'll get the same value, but one will be positive and one will be negative. Now, moving on to cosine, cosine is an even function, so our symmetry is right over that y-axis. All right, so let's do the same. Let's look at some sort of point out here, maybe theta, and look at that same point, negative theta, on the other side. So theta and negative theta. Now, in both instances, if we look at where the y values are for the point, you'll notice that they're exactly the same uh, for each of those angles. So if I'm looking at negative theta or I'm looking at theta, I would have the same value either way. So these identities are really all about the symmetries of the function. Now, if you can understand how these two are built, the rest are actually just uh, uh, versions of sine and cosine. And here's why. Let's suppose you're dealing with cosecant of a negative angle. And you're not sure whether it should be uh, a negative sign that comes out front or maybe just disappears entirely. You can use your identities to say, wait a minute, cosecant is actually one of our reciprocals of sine. So I'm just gonna replace it with one over sine of negative theta. Now, since I know what to do with sine of negative theta, I can go ahead and write this as one divided by negative sine of theta. So we're using that first identity there. Uh, and now rewrite this back into cosecant. So negative cosecant of theta. And you can do the same with all the rest of these. Uh, you simply write them in terms of sine and cosine, use your original two identities, and then see the overall result. All right, let's get into some examples using these and see how they can be uh, especially useful. So let's suppose that we know that the value of cosine of an angle is two thirds, and I wanna know what is the value of negative cosine. So if I wanna figure out the value of this, then I'm going to use my identities. For cosine, if I'm looking at cosine of negative of the angle, it's simply equal to cosine. So in this instance, I'll get the exact same value as what I was given. So cosine of negative theta is simply two thirds. Uh, let's try a few more of these to make sure that we understand what we're looking for. In this one, I'm giving that sine of theta is 0 0.902, and I'm looking for a negative sine of negative theta. So this one has a lot going on for it. But let's just first replace this part of it. That's another one of my identities. So this would equal to negative sine of positive theta. Now this negative sign is still out front, so let's go ahead and put that there. And then I can say I have a negative times a negative, so this all equals to positive sine of theta. And I know the value of sine of theta, so I can just go ahead and put that in here, 0 0.902, and we're done. Now this one, I have information about tangent of negative theta, it's equal to 1 third, and I'm looking for the value of positive tangent. So again, we're gonna do some rewriting. Let's go ahead and start with tangent of negative theta equals one third. So I can start to use my identities on just the tangent of negative theta. And what I need to do with this negative sign is bring it out front. So tangent of positive theta equals one third. Since these are identities, they would both equal the same thing. 
All right, I really wanna know about tangent of theta, not negative tangent of theta, so let's move that negative sign to the other side. All right, and there's my answer. Tangent of positive angle equals a negative one third. Not bad. All right, lastly, let's see how these uh, identities might help us simplify an expression. So I have here a bunch of trigonometric functions. I have some secants, some sines, and I want to simplify this by making it uh, as condensed as possible. But with them having different angles, they're technically not like terms. I can't normally put these guys together. But we're going to start replacing these negative angles so that I have positive angles in there so they will be like terms, and then we can actually go ahead and combine them. All right, so let's start off with this secant of negative theta. Using my identities, this would simply equal secant of positive theta. All right, so that looks good. Uh, over here, I have sine of negative theta, so I can replace that with a negative sine of theta. And of course, it looks like I still have another negative sine, and we'll go ahead and put that in there as well. Plus two sine of theta, not bad. So now I can see we have some combining to do. I have one secant plus three secants for a total of four secants. And then my negative times a negative will give me a positive sign over here. And then I can go ahead and combine these two signs. So two sine plus one sign, a total of three sine. And now we're done since um, combining secant and sine are two different trigonometric functions. Uh, I don't necessarily need to combine those. So four secant theta plus three sine of theta. All right. So you can see these negative angle identities. They give you a lot of options uh, if you do happen to have a negative angle on the inside. They essentially give you a way so that you can write it so you have a positive angle on the inside. All right. If you'd like to see some more videos, please visit mysecretmathtutor.com.